And the lovely NSA goes, oh no, not them again. <laughs> Whenever they do this record thing, it gets really weird. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. Wow, you actually got it this time. Yay! <laughs> Uh, so would this be take two, part two, summary, finale? I would say this is our thoughts on the finale and what we thought about the show after watching it. All right. And if you haven't watched the series yet, go watch it. This will contain spoilers. If you've already watched the series but haven't listened to us blather on about it, go back and find our first recording. I'll put a link to it in the description and you'll probably see a little link to it on screen. Yay! Technology! <laughs> This show was so enjoyable, especially these last two episodes where you're like, oh! <laughs> especially the last episodes as a whole, you just suddenly get the reveal of, wait, 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 this was not a reality show the entire time? This explains so much. But, but I was watching it, so I'm, I'm part of the audience. <laughs> Whoa, meta. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Very meta. And if you continue to think about it, your brain gets stuck in a recursion loop, and you pass out. So, don't. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that made me sad about that reveal is that it meant we wouldn't get more episodes. <laughs> well, there's plenty other mediums of this. They have a game. I don't know if they'll ever bring it over here. I just know it's out on Android and iPhone. There was the manga and the light novels, which I believe the light novels were the first iteration of this story. Okay, so we need the light novels translated and brought over here. And while the universe is listening to light novels I want translated, the Earl and the Fairy, please. <laughs> I'm just glad the melancholy of Suzumi Haruhi series got translated. I got like three volumes of that I actually, well, two of them I actually need to read through. But back to Cute High. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no way you can say the name correctly twice. That, and every time I say it, I add an extra, like, minute to 30 seconds to the show, so... <laughs> Good point. Internet attention spans are short. <laughs> what, what? Exactly. <laughs> oh, so why don't we start off with you? Uh, all right. So, very fun. You know, we have the usual thing of, oh, it's the school festival. What is our club going to do? Oh, let's do a restaurant. Let's sell curry. <laughs> right now, I can only think of one other cartoon I've seen that in but I'm sure there are others I've seen it in. And something always goes wrong. Mm -hmm. It's usually not a supervillain, though. <laughs> and what a time for the blur to be off, because now we can all identify each other. <laughs> and Kinshiro's a real jerk. He sees that it's Epinard, and he still tries to kill him. <laughs> I also like the fact that they were like, what is the theme for our curry restaurant? Oh, wait. We can transform! <laughs> Cosplay superhero curry! <laughs> and uh, Yamato was way too into handing out those flyers. I was afraid he was going to tap into his love power and jump to the top of the school roof. He was jumping rather high for an ordinary kid anyways for us to be able to see him over the crowd. <laughs> uh, that suddenly reminded me of another episode where he got his personality kind of got downplayed because of something and everyone started liking him and this one kid goes no i'm supposed to be the one who's like doted upon yes that would be the episode right before the two-part finale episode 10 love is glasses where yamoto gets a cold and somehow this changes his personality along with the wearing of glasses <laughs> and so he takes on the personality traits of the boy who first diagnosed him as being ill you know, who is that, you know, underclassman that everyone wants to coach for them and, you know, everyone stands up for. Who gets turned into one of the creepiest monsters. It looks like a cross between a cat, a baseball, and a baseball bat. <laughs> With glasses. <laughs> and he keeps attacking while saying, I don't want to fight. I shouldn't have to fight. You're the one attacking. <laughs> if you stopped, they would stop. You started it. <laughs> uh, whatever would just leave me alone. You keep hitting us. Why are we going to leave you alone when you keep hitting us? I don't think he knows how this works. <laughs> but yeah, this show is just a hoot. All the characters, the interactions. Uh, please continue with your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
where we've gotten so sidetracked. I love that, you know, this entire thing started over such a small thing. Just because Epinard wanted to go have curry one day after school instead of going to Alright's house. Mm -hmm. One time. He didn't invite you because he knows you don't like curry. Yes, that boy was very insecure. <laughs> no kidding. But he might have been a little less insecure if, you know, Cerulean hadn't caught Epinard and kept him from tripping and they hadn't walked off together. Because now <laughs> obviously he's being ditched for someone else. Well, I guess that just shows how insecure he is. That he can't just go up to them and go, wait for me or something. Or are you okay? You know, because your friend just, even though he was caught, you know, he's your friend. You should go up to him and still see if he's okay. Yes, but then you have to admit that you followed him. Yeah, it leads to an awkward situation, but you can still, you know, like, oh, I saw, I was just walking by and I saw you trip and I wasn't able to catch you. Oh, and thank you for catching him. Can we be friends? But then we wouldn't have the rest of this awesome story. So. <laughs> We'd still have an awesome story, even if Alright turned out to be a normal kid and he and Epinard were friends, because Zender would have just found somebody else. It just hit me. I really love the fact that we have a hedgehog a goldfish and a wombat as the magical animals. Yes, and at the same time it's rather hard to say animals because apparently humans are the odd creatures out. When you see the images of all the different races that are watching the show, mm -hmm. and you know, wombat kind of referred to us as animals, so it's like, hey, wait a minute, oh. No, still wait a minute because we're communicating with you intelligently, so yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> Yeah, like you're. Wait, 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 wait. We're, we're an endangered species or something? Because <laughs> Wombat apparently is a. basically like an activist protecting rare species of animals. No, not protecting rare species of animals. He's part of the ethics committee against all of this horrible programming. <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny considering what he did to that poor teacher. Which was an accident. <laughs> Yes, and I love how they actually had to make a note of that at the very end of the credits. Don't worry, he was okay. <laughs> well, it was kind of important. Mm-hmm. Especially since they didn't wrap it up during the actual show. Well, the show got cancelled. They ran out of time. <laughs> uh, I don't think the actual cartoon was actually cancelled. I think it was just planned to be this long. But I love how the show in the program was like, cancelled? That was quick. <laughs> Yeah, I'm referring to the in-show cancellation. That's why the show that we were watching had to have that at the end because they ran out of time in the fake reality show. Ah. Uh. Oh, I get it. I get it. That's very meta because they're acting like the show, like this is actually the ending of the reality show in the show. That makes sense. Yes. I get it now. <laughs> you know, I just love the absurdity of the names. You know, so we're now more better battle lovers? <laughs> like, more better. Really. That is just a horrible phrase. Yep, and we finally get our um, giant robot in this series. <laughs> yes, porcupine fish. Mm hmm And I love the fact that even the bad guys now have the ultimate stage of their um, transformations. <laughs> the more better, like you said. Even the bad guys have it now. Ooh, they change sides. Wait a minute, how does that work when you're using the... I think the changeover is okay and everything, but they could still use their powers beforehand, so why didn't the bad guys... Not the bad guys, I should say the programmers turn off their powers? And then we get the whole transformation of them, them actually getting their powers from Wombat and stuff like that, or... Uh, I know time and everything, but... Yeah, and I'm sure that Zendar and... God, the fish's name starts with the H, so we're gonna go with fish. Because fish starts with H. <laughs> and so, you know, they were so busy focusing on the robot, they may not have thought to turn off the powers. Also, the leader of the group stopped fighting, so you would assume the underlings are incapable of acting on their own. Hmm. Oh, and the way you said that reminded me of the whole, I don't, can't remember exactly how it was phrased in the show, but apparently when someone's speaking or something, the other characters have to freeze or something like that. <laughs> The Kabuki rule. Yeah. And, you know, while Yamato was fighting against his brother Gora, I'm like, why didn't you just start a monologue? He would have had to stop attacking you. 
Uh, or, or just stand there and constantly transform while your friends walk around him and knock him out or something? <laughs> well, there are exceptions to the transformation sequence uninterrupted rule. You know, that does occasionally happen. But usually the kabuki rule is not broken, so... <laughs> that one would have been safer to go with. Also, I really hope I see someone play cosplaying as Gora as his evil self, because I love the mask. <laughs> Okay, just because I have one like it. <laughs> but I really couldn't pull off that costume because I really hate investing in wigs, so. Uh, I'll probably edit this out, but I just realized we could, I could go as him and you could go as Scarlet. <laughs> I'd have to bind my hair up. In terms of hair color slash style, I'm closest to um, Cerulean. Also, Cerulean and Epinard are the only good guys who actually have pants. <laughs> Okay, I'm leaving this in then. Uh <laughs> this is a very important factor in cosplay. This is why I usually cosplay opposite gender. Because the tuxedo mask outfit covers more than the Sailor Scout outfits hanging in my closet. Pants. Uh, if you're going to cosplay as anyone but the Sailor Scout characters, they must have pants. Uh I, I bought those costumes because they were on clearance. I didn't know if I would ever actually get the nerve to wear them in public. And besides, I still don't have the right shoes and I'm still missing a pair of earrings. <laughs> uh, I might want to get back to the show at this point, though cosplaying as the characters, hmm, other than the older brother, who do you think I could pull off? Oh, you could definitely do older brother, Gara. So you've got the height. I don't know, it would be kind of fun to see you as Vesta. <laughs> well, considering he's actually my favorite character in the show other than Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Just something about him, I was like, I like him. I like you. I like him. Like, you've told me this. Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I really liked his interactions with Sulphur, how they kind of did this thing where they may be gay, they may not be gay. It's questioning whether or not he actually is into girls. <laughs> and it was mostly done for probably fan service and jokes, but it was great. Yeah, well... You know, each set of two friends you could infer those things from. You know, the same could be said about Cerulean and Epinard, though it wasn't stated quite so blatantly. And you notice when the good guys and the bad guys paired up, we had a team of eight, because the good guys had a team of five and the bad guys had a team of three. You know, eight is a very auspicious number. Mm. Oh, and that's that reminded me of that great little scene where the two underlings on the bad side come over to the reporter and start like asking him questions and suddenly the pink haired one punches the guy yeah which is really funny because it was silver who was asking the questions and you can see when they go to the white angle it looks like silver was getting ready to punch the guy from press society club mm -hmm. but pearl went ahead and did it as the most junior member mm -hmm. i'm the one who's supposed to get my hands dirty <laughs> huh. so you think we're ready for our final thoughts Oh, we should be, because we went a lot more in-depth in part one, so this is more about the finale, the meta-ness of the reveal, and the fun, over-the-top insanity <laughs> that is Cute High Earth Defense Club love. It's kind of like Gurren Logan. It just keeps going further and further, and it doesn't care. <laughs> oh, I think it cared. It just cared not for the fact that you would normally try to hold things, because it was surprisingly well organized and serious and it did the tropes well but oh my god it knew how far to take them and went you know we can probably go a little bit further <laughs> uh well i really like this series from beginning to end i really hope they figure out something to like do a sequel since it was hinted in the series that there was a previous reality show yeah so if we could have you know the first iteration of cide that would be cool Mm -hmm. It'd also be cool to have like them come back and get sucked into it again, but not even realize it until, wait a minute, we have powers again. Look for cameras. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would think if they came back again, they would try a different spot on the planet this time. Since coming <laughs> to this area twice failed. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on cute high defense God damn it! <laughs> I knew you couldn't do it twice in one recording. 
cute high Earth Defense Club love. Hey, no fair reading off the screen. I didn't. What happened is my mouth wouldn't say Earth. And this has been our thoughts on cute high Earth Defense Club love. Okay, and that's a wrap. Thanks for listening. If you want to see more of my art, you can find it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with this podcast and get other tidbits, you can follow us on Tumblr as well. If you really like our podcast, please consider subscribing and or leaving comments below. Please keep them nice. If you would like some art of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description.